Long haul truckers, what's the creepiest or most paranormal thing you've seen on the road at night? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. My grandfather told me the story about how he was driving west to east along an empty stretch of road in southern South Dakota. He stopped at a stop sign at an intersection with nothing in sight, no buildings and no other vehicles. Then there was a bright light that hit him. He looked up and saw a bunch of blinking lights. Next thing he knew, he was at the counter of a diner about an hour down the road. It was about six hours later and he had no idea what had happened. He asked the person at the diner when he came in and the guy told him he came in about 10 minutes ago and just started drinking coffee without talking much. My grandpa told him what had happened and the guy said something like, yep, that's happens around here sometimes. Nothing weird ever happened to him again. He avoided that area for the rest of his life. He said he doesn't believe in aliens and doesn't know what happened, but I had a suspicion he thought he had been abducted and just never accepted it. He told me never to tell this story to other people, but he died years ago and most of the people who knew him are dead, so I figured it was okay. I have an uncle that was a truck driver in his youth, and he told all sort of stories about the things he encountered while on the roads of Brazil's countryside. He said that, there was a road, in the north, maybe northwestern, part of the country that the truckers always said to avoid. Once, he had a scheduled delivery and he was late, so, he said to himself F that and took the aforementioned road, because it looked like it would be a good shortcut. At some point of the night, while driving, his truck simply stopped working, dead, like the battery died or something. After five minutes in the complete darkness, he saw lights at the sky, slowly passing over his truck. He tried the ignition again. Nothing, so he just sat there, scared to the bone, watching the lights go by. The lights eventually went away and after something like 20 or 30 minutes, his truck started working again and he followed his way. Not a truck driver, but I've crossed the states many many times in my career. I used to tour manage a band that consisted of four musicians and two crew, so it was a total of seven of us. We would often drive a white sprinter van with a U-Haul trailer on the back, and if you're familiar with U-Haul, you know they have different pictures on the sides of them, often a state and something significant from that state painted on the side. We were about an hour outside of Roswell, New Mexico at 2 AM. It was in the summer, we were coming from having just played the New Mexico State Fair. In every direction around us it was pitch black, no lights from cities or even rest stops, no other cars, nothing. We have absolutely no phone signal. All of our phones say no signal at the same time. It's a two-lane highway, the only illumination coming from our headlights. We haven't seen another car for a very long time. Suddenly on the horizon, we see a light appear directly ahead of us. We keep driving normally, and the light is approaching us quickly. We just assume it's another car coming our way on the other side of the highway, but then as the vehicle goes to pass us. It's a white sprinter van towing a U-Haul trailer with the exact same state artwork as ours on the side. Same tires, same model van, same trailer, same everything, and as soon as we pass it, it's gone. All of us very uncomfortably said the same thing at the same time. Was that, did that van have the same, what are the chances, I'll never forget it. We couldn't do anything but just uncomfortably acknowledge we all saw the same thing and none of us were losing our minds. My dad was a trucker, and in the summers, I tagged along with him. One evening, we were driving from Houston to Jacksonville and somehow we got turned around on the back roads of Louisiana. The last major place I remembered us being in was Troy at about 1 AM. Well it was almost 3 and we had no idea where we were. We eventually came to this little bitty town. It had one broken stoplight, a diner, an abandoned factory, and some empty shopping centers. In total it was maybe four blocks from one end to the other. We were both hungry, and because we didn't want to wait to go to a truck stop, we pulled in behind the diner. Now that I think about it the fact that a small town diner was open at 3 AM should have been a sign that something was amiss. We get in and this diner is pretty nice actually. A bit old school, reminiscence of the 60s. There's a single waitress on duty and a cop eating in a booth, we naturally all got to chatting. I remember that meal so clearly because it was the first time I had grits. They were loaded with cheese and bacon. The cop gave us directions back to the highway and bought me a chocolate milk for the road. I even remember the tables, they were composite wood covered in polka dot contact paper. 
Well we eventually made it to civilization and later that morning at a stop, my dad asks about the town. Cue a lot of confused local truckers. He was sure he was getting the name right, but no one had heard of it. A few months later, he was driving me back home to Texas and he drove through Louisiana attempting to find the town. We never could. We're still not sure what happened if we drove through a ghost town no one remembered or something weirder, but I remember that night clearly. I'm not a trucker, but I'm a territory manager and my territory goes from New Mexico to Alabama and up to Kansas. So, it's not uncommon for me to have to drive from Dallas, Texas to Albuquerque, New Mexico and then from Albuquerque to Montgomery, Alabama and then back to Dallas all in one week. I've got a a couple, I work for a premium off-road lighting company, so we work in the deserts at night a lot, usually with trophy truck and ultra 4 race teams. Last year, I was coming home from King of the Hammers and it was about 4.30 am and I was on a state highway through the desert in southern New Mexico. If you've never driven it, you're basically as far away from anything out in the desert as you can possibly be. Impossibly straight one-lane highways that stretch from hundreds of miles. I was awake and alert even though it was so late, and I was totally alone on the road and had been for hours. Suddenly, without warning while I was trucking along going about 80 miles per hour, the most insanely bright light came on right off my tailgate. It was so bright it lit up everything in the cab and was so blinding. I thought one of our race teams had snuck up behind me or something and turned on their light bars to screw with me. I drive a wrapped and branded distinct show truck, so it happens a lot. The light stayed on my ass for a good 30 seconds, and would stay right on my ass even when I'd swerve a bit or when I moved onto the shoulder a bit to see if they would pass. It was weird, it was like the light was bolted to the back of my truck or something. After about 30 seconds, I had enough. So I flipped on my rear facing lights to give them a taste of their own medicine and instantly the light behind me went off and there was nothing, nothing whatsoever. Even though I was kind of blinded, I have some really powerful backup lights and they came on the second the other light went out, so there is no way whatsoever another vehicle was behind me. And there was just wide open flat desert all around, so it's not like they could have pulled off and hidden and I would have seen them anyways, just nothing. I was totally freaked out, but I'm not an easy scare and very comfortable with being in the desert alone at night. So I pulled over, grabbed my knife and my flashlight and had a look around. I shone my flashlight all around and even used some of my portable hyper spots. Again, I work for a lighting company and always carry around tons of demo lights, to look all around me for anything, and there was nothing. No cars, no trucks, aircraft, UFOs, nothing at all except wide open empty New Mexico desert. My truck was totally fine, but I know I wasn't just seeing things because the back of my truck was hot, like way hotter than normal. All the metal on the bed sides and tailgate was almost uncomfortable to the touch, I've never figured it out. The only logical possibility I can think of is I've read about ball lightning before and apparently it's attracted to metal objects. Maybe I found some ball lightning and it stuck to the back of my truck? Former driver here you'd see all kinds of crazy stuff at night on the road. I've always been a night owl, so I can't chalk it up to exhaustion, but I'm sure that none of it was what it seemed. A giant shaggy black dog running along and eventually across the road. A man with yellow eyes and a long black duster standing in the road smiling. More than one light in the sky moving and changing directions at speeds that make my head spin to think about. Phantom deer, probably real deer but it sure didn't seem like it at the time. Injured people walking on the side of the road. Saw a few, only one ever turned out to be real. Glad I kept stopping to check, lights in the trees like fairies. And my personal favorite, an enormous black creature with extremely long appendages and a hunched torso that tried to swipe at vehicles. I've read a lot about most of these phenomena and understand their explanations, but darned if they didn't seem completely real and scary when I witnessed them. Some of them so much so that it seemed like a good idea to stop instead of risking it. I don't believe in ghosts and monsters, but some of those gave me pause. The church I grew up in supported several missionaries to the Navajo Reservation in northern Arizona. They ran two or three Baptist churches up there. We went up there often to help build houses, schools, etc. One trip when I was about 12 or 13 years old, I was dozing off in the front passenger seat of our 15-passenger church van. The trip leader, John, a practical, no-nonsense Vietnam vet, a carpenter, was driving. I sort of startled awake, every hair on my body standing on end, and I heard John praying under his breath, Jesus, Lord, protect us, 
Jesus, Lord, protect us. His face was lit only by the panel lights, but I could see him staring straight ahead his hands gripped tightly on the wheel. The speedometer said 85 miles per hour and I thought it was strange since our driver always stayed around 65. Then I looked out the window on my side and in the running lights of this van, I swear I think I saw a gaunt naked man running on all fours alongside our van on the highway. I almost wet my pants. Skinwalkers, John said. Just pray, you better believe I prayed. This thing stayed with us for about five minutes then just sort of pulled short and disappeared into the desert. Northern Arizona is a Navajo reservation, well known for urban legends of skinwalkers, corrupted medicine men or witches who can transform into animals, usually wolves or coyotes. I'm not a long haul trucker by trade, but back in the day, I had several odd jobs that required I drive across the country. One was shipping horses, I drove the truck from barns to shows or vice versa, and the other was working as road crew for a rock band. I was very very young, 16 to 20 years old. For reference, I'm female, short, athletic. Definitely the odd one are at a lot of rest stops and gas stations along the major routes. I also am and was tattooed and had a red mohawk which made me stand out more. Several weird things happened that I remember. But first I wanna say, Navajo Nation is indeed really really creepy. Always drove through at night too, never meant to plan that way, but that's always how it happened. Other creepy places northern Utah, totally hills have eyes up there. Anyways, here's story 1, I was driving from Galveston, Texas to New Orleans, Los Angeles. Galveston had just been hit by the hurricane, and there was a weird serial killer moving through that city, so the vibe had already begun as weird. Just as I crossed the border from Texas to LA, I started to get super tired, was really late, 3M-ish. Tried to find a gas station to pull over, rest, and fill up, but all of them were closed. Gave up, pulled into the next one which was closed, parked in the far corner of the lot, killed my car, a convertible jeep at the time, and laid my seat back to sleep. Everything seemed quiet, there were a few lights from the station that were on 24-7, but I parked far enough away they couldn't really bother my eyes. I woke up with a start, had been dreaming, but I had this like gut instinct to wake up. I immediately saw someone covered in mud, wearing rags, holding a knife, advancing slowly towards my car. He was maybe 5 feet away, moving forward. My adrenaline kicked in immediately and I switched the car on. At that point, he lets out some guttural growl and launches towards the car, as I'm backing up. I barely miss him as he's grabbing at the vehicle. With the headlights on, I could see he was covered in sores and the knife was all rusty. I sped out of there, didn't sleep again all the way to Nola, freaked me out so badly. I also never again slept in my car. The idea he could have been watching me sleep for who knows how long freaked me out. My car was also a convertible, he could have easily cut his way in. That image of waking up to some crazy person advancing on me with a knife has also given me nightmares for many years. Second story, I was hauling horses from Kansas to Tucson, Arizona. Driving a big Ford truck, a dually, with a small trailer carrying three horses. Near Gallup, around 2 AM, the back inner tire on the passenger side blows out. I pulled off the road and assessed the situation. There was zero chance I could change the tire myself given the trailer or dually truck situation. And I'm tired and weak from exhaustion, so I call a tow company and try to find a temporary boarding place for the horses. It's the morning of Easter Sunday, literally no one is open. I'm going through the yellow pages calling tow company after tow company, yes I'm old, this is pre-smartphones. Finally. I find a Native American tow company who also has a ranch with boarding for the horses and a truck to come grab the trailer. Was a godsend, but the guy and his wife, who ran the company, told me to be very very careful not to leave my truck during the two hours drive it would take for them to arrive. They said this in such an emphatic way I began to get really scared. They told me not to open the door for anyone and to keep the doors locked. No one was really on the road, so I was confused as to who could really be a threat out there but I took them seriously and locked my doors and waited. I kept hearing this weird scratching sound on the back panel window of the truck, like someone was trying to open the small window back there. A couple times, the truck would sway, which I figured was the horses. It was pitch black out, no wind. I heard a few footsteps but chalked it up to the wind or my imagination. I was getting scared out there alone unable to move. Eventually, the nice couple with the tow truck and other truck to haul the pony show up. 
They immediately and first moved me from my cabin to the cabin of their tow truck. Tell me not to move or open the door under any circumstances. The couple is super fast, lady deals with the horses, man gets my truck up on the tow bed. They then drive me to their ranch, after the man drops my truck off at a local shop owned by his cousin who he says will handle the flat on Monday. Anyways long story short, this wonderful couple takes care of me and the horses, gets my truck tire fixed. As I'm ready to leave on Monday afternoon, there's a story on the local news of a woman with a flat tire who was murdered alongside the same stretch of highway on Sunday evening. She'd been out changing a tire and looks like someone murdered her. I asked the couple and they didn't say much other than to never ever get out of the car at night along this highway, ever. Said it was certain death. They also gave me some bags of potpourri stuff to have or burn in my truck cabin for protection. I felt very lucky to find these nice people to be honest. They definitely looked out for me and never once did I feel unsafe staying at their house. I was 18 at the time and definitely knew nothing about safety along trucking routes. But from now on, I drive through that area and I don't stop if I can avoid it. Load up on gas, check tires in Flagstaff and ride on through to Albuquerque. There's weird stuff out there on the reservations and I don't pretend to know or want to know what it is. In the 1990s, I spent a lot of time hitchhiking around Europe, I'm a Brit. One trip, I was hitching from Newcastle, my hometown, to the south of France. I got to a point just south of Paris some little entrance ramp in the arse end of nowhere, it was around 2 am, and I was flat out exhausted. I placed my sign by my feet and was sitting on my pack, sleeping in place. I was woken by the unmistakable blast of a lorry horn, jumped up and ran, without thinking, to the lorry that had pulled up just yards away. The driver asked where I was headed. I replied south, and he laughed and told me to get in. After a fairly brief conversation about my trip up until that point, where I was going, etc., the guy realized I was literally dead on my feet, exhausted. He pointed to the bed behind the cab seats and said if I wanted to get my head down, I was welcome to crash out. One of the greatest unwritten rules of hitching at the time was that the trucker's sleep area was sacrosanct, you didn't even put your bag there. So this guy, Eve, his name has just come to me, offering to let me rest up was out of the ordinary. I did a quick, split-second, evaluation of am I going to be horribly raped and tortured? or is this guy legit? And decide I was safe. This was, in hindsight, probably based much more on my state of exhaustion than any true evaluation of his trustworthiness, but, hey-ho. I jumped in the back, lay out flat for the first time in two days, and was asleep within seconds. Five hours later, I woke up in an empty cab, parked in truck stop as the sun was beginning to rise. Eve returned within a minute or so, espresso in hand, and started helping me to get my bags out his cab. I should point out that my spoken French at the time was basic at best, and Eve spoke no English. Most of our communication was a combination of hand signals, confusion and laughter. We went into the truck stop cafe, a relay, for anyone who's traveled in France basic, but a cut above your usual truck stop as far as food and drinks are concerned. And Eve insisted on paying for a monster breakfast for me, whilst he only had another coffee and a croissant. As I was working my way through the breakfast, Eve was up at the counter, chatting to the proprietor. He clearly knew them, so I didn't think anything of it, obviously he was chatting to his friend rather than doing monkey signs to the monolingual Brit, or so I thought. After a while, he came over and said he had to go. I knew this was my stopping point as far as he was concerned, he was heading west whereas I was continuing south. At which point I thanked him profusely for all of his help, the breakfast, and wished him a safe journey. He wished me luck and went on his way. After I'd finished my breakfast, I went up to the counter to order another coffee before I set out on the rest of my journey, at this point, I was about halfway down France. And when I handed over my money, the proprietor waved it away, saying it was on Eve. Yes, he'd paid for my next coffee before he left, on top of buying me breakfast. I gave him a little salute, thinking top bloke, and sat down to drink my coffee whilst having a little chuckle. Anyway, soon enough I figured I'd best get back on the road, so I went back to the counter to order a jambon boar to take away for the road and say goodbye to the proprietor, who had also been super nice to me throughout. Again, I went to pay and it was waved away. Eve had not only bought my breakfast, paid for a coffee he'd figured I'd have after I left. He'd also told the proprietor to give me a sandwich before I left, and paid for it. As this was all being explained to me, I just couldn't help breaking out in the biggest smile, and laughing like hell, 
What a bloke. I thanked the proprietor, asked him to sincerely thank Eve the next time he saw him, and went to hit the road. At which point, I was then told to sit down and wait for about another half hour, as Eve had arranged the lift south for me with a colleague he knew was passing by. The man was an absolute gent, went above and beyond the helping your fellow man, and did it all without even sticking around for me to say, thanks. Absolute legend, thanks Eve, wherever you are.